Hey there, welcome to episode 74 of the Social Business Engine podcast. This is the podcast where I invite leaders from brands across all industries who are excited to share with you how they use social media in their business strategy. I'm Bernie Borges, CEO of Find and Convert, and your host of the Social Business Engine podcast. On this episode, you're going to meet Natanya Anderson. Natanya is Director of Social Media and Community at Whole Foods Market. Since its first store in 1980 in Austin, Texas, Whole Foods Market has been passionately focused on being a retailer of natural and organic foods. Today, Whole Foods has more than 400 stores across North America and the United Kingdom. You're going to learn how Whole Foods Market's commitment to the strictest quality standards in the industry is played out in how the brand engages in social media. Natanya will share insights that will inspire any executive or anyone in charge of social media at a brand to examine how their team is using social media by asking the question, is our behavior and engagement in social media aligned with our company values? And are our values obvious to the people with whom we engage in social media? You know, this is often not the case. And today's episode is a great example of a brand that's hitting on all cylinders on this important aspect of their strategy. Now, this episode is sponsored by my friends at Cision, a leading global media intelligence company. Soon, we're going to be publishing another social business journal that will feature five enterprise-level brands who answer the question, what's working in social media marketing? If you've subscribed to receive our weekly podcast by email, you'll get notified when we publish this journal, but you must be subscribed by email. So if you're not, just text us at 38470 and text SBE show. And it's not case sensitive, but just text 38470 and text SBE show and you'll get subscribed. And now here's my interview with Natanya Anderson from Whole Foods Market. Natanya, welcome to the Social Business Engine podcast. Thanks so much, Bernie. I'm really happy to be here and looking forward to the conversation. Outstanding. Well, I've been looking forward to this conversation, Natanya, and I would like to begin with kind of a little bit of the obvious. I think most people probably are familiar with the Whole Foods Market brand, but I still want you to overview the brand a little bit because I really want you to focus on something that perhaps not everybody is familiar with, and that is the core values of the brand and how that is so important in every aspect of what you do every day. You know, I'm happy to. It's one of the the core reasons that that I came to Whole Foods Market and that I think that the work that um, I get to do with my team in the business um, on a regular basis is so successful. Absolutely, Whole Foods Market is a grocery store. We're a retailer. Um, We want you to to come into our store and buy food and really enjoy the entire experience from from before you come into the store all the way till you get home and and you enjoy what it is that you purchased. But I think what's very important to know about our businesses is, is a couple of different key differentiators. The first is that our entire business foundation is a set of quality standards they're very clear about the kinds of products you will not find in our stores. And the quality standards are a living, breathing document that we continue to evolve as the food space evolves. So for example, you're not going to find high fructose corn syrup in anything in our stores. So for people who are working hard to avoid that, the second that they walk into our doors, they know that they don't even have to think about it anymore. And then over time, as there are there's new research, there's new learnings, new areas of interest for our customers. We're able to then adapt our quality standards so that there's a level of comfort that customers have about what they simply won't find on our shelves. And we also have a lot of standards around identifying and creating transparency around sourcing. So what if you want to understand how sustainable the seafood is that you're purchasing, you can find that on stickers on the product. And we don't sell seafood that's red rated. So seafood that's that's not um, that's highly endangered and it's not good for the environment for us to eat. We simply don't sell. Mm-hmm. And the same is true. We have really specific animal welfare standards. So a lot of what we do as a business is try to establish that foundation 
so that our customers have some comfort in the quality and the sourcing of, of the food that they offer. And that's just built into everything that we do. It's really hard to have a meeting here without talking about quality standards. Mm -hmm. And similarly, it's really hard to have a meeting without talking about our core values. Mm -hmm. And we have a set of core values that are not only about how Whole Foods Market operates as an entity, but it's also about how we operate as a function of the community because the business really does see itself as an, as the creation of the community and being tied to, and in many ways indebted to the community. So of course you expect to see quality standards around, you know, selling high quality natural and organic products. And, and we definitely want to satisfy and delight our customers. But then we see things like we serve and support our local and global communities and we practice and advance environmental stewardship. And one of my personal favorites is creating ongoing win-win partnerships with suppliers. So once again, when you add that into the foundation created by quality standards, for us, it's about so much more than selling groceries. It's about being a part of the community and making the world a better place than when we left it. Okay, wow, you covered so much there. I'm not quite <laughs> sure where to, where to go next, but um, all right, here, here we go. Uh, I want to talk, Natanya, about your role at Whole Foods as it relates to managing social media and community. But I also want, sort of in the same breath, if you will, um, you mentioned local several times. And in my introduction, I, I referenced that Whole Foods Market has over 400 retail locations across North America and the UK. So clearly, you're, you're local, but even in, even in a market, like I'm in Tampa Bay and there's three stores here. I, I was on your website and, and in California, I didn't count them, but it looked like you had about 30 or 40 stores. Mm -hmm. So you're local to every community. So talk about your role and then segue into how that gets managed locally. Absolutely. And and the two are, are inexorably tied for us, right? So my team, my role has, I have three areas of responsibility. I am responsible for social media and I'll talk in a minute about what that means. I also have responsibility for CRM and also responsibility for customer care at Whole Foods. And in the social spaces, we have two key areas of work. The first is we're responsible for social media at the brand level and all that that entails, brand channel management, brand channel strategy, listening and monitoring. Um, we do social customer care out of my social team. And so much like every other big brand or even small brand that's, that's in social media, we have all of that responsibility and my team, my team does that work every day. But the other piece for us, which is so tightly tied to local, is we enable hyper-local social at Whole Foods. So we have over 850 social media accounts. A lot of those stores that you talked about have their own social media or they're part of a city-based social media program. And as much of the work that goes into establishing our brand in social media goes into supporting all of those local folks who are working in social media on a daily basis out at the local level. And we consider it enablement. There are words we don't use here. You're not ever going to hear me talk about governance or command and control because we're not trying to control their experiences mm -hmm. and the way that they engage with customers. We're trying to extend them. Okay. We're trying to, to take that really incredible local feel, you know, if you've ever been into two or three Whole Foods markets, they don't look the same. They mm -hmm. don't feel the same. They're a function of their community. Even here in Austin, I work above the big flagship store, but my store, the one where I shop the most, is actually a little suburban store out um, in the hill country. And they're two very different experiences right down to the, the decor and, of course, the product selection. Mm -hmm. And so we see local social as an extension of that uniqueness in every store. And so my teams, one of our key roles is to enable and facilitate, and that includes tools and technology, best practices, and then really being that place where we can hear about all of the incredible things that are happening in the local innovation, bring that back into the business, think about how it aligns with the brand strategy, and then push it back out into the business so that all of those other stores who are very busy every day serving customers and, and selling groceries are learning from one another. So from my perspective, the enablement work that my team does is as critical to the business as, as brand channel management and brand social strategy. So 
talk a little bit about the the training, and I don't know if training is the right word, Natanya. So you know, replace it with whatever the right mm-hmm. word is to achieve that hyper local social engagement among the people at the store level who are managing it. Absolutely. There are components to that that I think are really critical to its success. The first is that Whole Foods as an organization is broken up into 12 regions, and each one has its own marketing function. And those teams really support the local stores. As you might imagine, with 400 plus stores, it's really difficult for a central office to have day-to-day working relationships with stores in any way that's scalable. And so instead what happens is we have these regional groups, and it's not just marketing, they serve the business holistically, who really go out and are feet on the street with the stores on a regular basis. We have a role in all of those regions that's a digital specialist who's focused on social. So my team is responsible for working with those digital specialists to deliver, whether it's very specific training, um, you know, things on how to how to handle new features and changes to Facebook or Periscope is out. What is our point of view on that? And how do we believe it plays a role in local if it does? Um, also working with them on how they should be looking at their analytics and how much time they should be spending on that. And then also assisting them with campaigns. So if there's a, a brand level campaign that's being pushed all the way down into the stores, then We provide assets, we provide potential talking points, but we also provide some specific guidance on how we believe the store social should be different from and complementary to the brand social. We have a lot of data that shows us that the content that succeeds at the brand level is very lifestyle focused. So we have a a vitamin and supplement sale that's coming up. And we talk a lot about how to pick the right vitamins for sports nutrition or, you know, how to, to figure out you know, what it is that you want to do if you just want to be sure that you have all the right vitamins and minerals every day. It's very lifestyle oriented. At the store level, we see things like store picks, team member picks. What are they buying on sale? What are the vitamins that they can't live without? And so really bringing that local flavor all the way in and making recommendations to the stores. And then when the campaign is over, looking at the data and bringing it back and saying, wow, these stores and this approach really seem to rock it out. So the next time we're going to do a sale, let's all try some of these, or here's a handful of tactics that were innovations at the local level that maybe some of us will want to want to try out. So, you know, that's, we really work with those regional folks to then move that down into the stores. And then it's the responsibility of the regional folks to get to know those individual store marketing teams and help them with whatever they need. Because as you might imagine, as you find in any enterprise, there's not consistent mastery and consistent skill sets across mm-hmm. a group of people. Mm-hmm. And so the regional specialists are really responsible for understanding this store marketer is all over Twitter, but they really need a little bit of help with Instagram. And maybe they need some some understanding of how to take really great photos on the fly in the store. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also thinking through things like uh what do we do with the reality that organic on Facebook doesn't really have very much reach? And, and do we want to think about how that integrates into our regional marketing budget? And so it's very much a layered approach because that's really the only way that you create scale in an organization. And so I feel like without that middle layer of the social specialist, my team would really struggle. And it would be very hard for me to not only create the business case for the ROI of those 12 people working here in my office, because that would, I think, be a difficult conversation. But more importantly, it's very critical that those folks are out in the regions and that they're able to um, travel to the stores and meet with the regional teams when they come together. So it's a, a really key component of scale for us there um, in how we help help enable people in those roles. So there's a lot of face-to-face that's taking place between uh, the marketing manager for each of those regions and the store staff. Is Mm -hmm. that what I'm hearing? Okay. Absolutely. I mean, they have regular meetings of the marketers to talk about a lot of things, right? Like social is just a tiny piece of what they do. And so that's a really great opportunity for the social specialist to, to, to be part of those large, larger strategy and, and execution conversations, but also they're able to get on the road. You know, we have Southern Pacific is um, Nevada plus Southern California plus Hawaii. Granted, getting to Hawaii is a little bit harder, but it's very realistic for the for our social specialists there to go see all of the star marketers once mm-hmm. or twice a year in a really cost effective way, mm-hmm. which would not be at all feasible for my team based in Austin. Sure. 
Um, and then they get on the phone with them. And, you know, I think it's also just that the local context for Whole Foods is such a function of our business. Everything about us is about that local store. Right, right. Um, that if we weren't piggybacking off of that, I actually believe that we would have less success. Right. So talk a little bit about the journey. I always, I like to talk about the journey, Natanya, because that's really kind of a, a central theme for the Social Business Engine podcast. I always talk about the social business journey that every brand, that each brand is on. In your case, I get the impression that you've been on this journey for a while. So I would think that uh, in that first store in 1980, the way you used social media then was probably a whole lot different than you're using <laughs> it now, right? I'm not sure Periscope was available or Instagram was available in 1980. I'm going to go with no. <laughs> yeah, I'm all kidding aside. So, you know, as new platforms like Periscope come along, how do you integrate that into the strategy? So, you know, Bernie, that's a really, a really great question and one that we don't necessarily have a one size fits all approach to, but generally what we try to do is understand holistically how brand plus local play together at Whole Foods and be really clear that local is not a mini me of brand. We're not trying to just publish the exact same content on all 850 of those channels because what's the point? It doesn't deliver any value to the customer and it doesn't really take advantage of the local, the benefits of, of our local uniqueness. So we're constantly trying to understand at a very high level by looking at data from brand and local both channel specific and not channel specific to understand what resonates with customers at the brand and local levels and what they're expecting from us so that we have an evolving perspective on how those two work together. And as a really good example, for a long time, we weren't trying very hard at all to coordinate brand plus local um, because part of it's a function of the autonomy here at Whole Foods. But we really felt like we wanted those local stores in those regions to just run with it. Um, there's enough coordination provided to us by the business holistically, you know, like everybody's going to be have supplements on sale this week. That's all we really need. But then one of the things that changed was in the last year, Whole Foods has decided to make some pretty significant investments in media buying, which was not part of our marketing DNA in the past. We would do some small media buys relative to new store openings and awareness, but we weren't going to be doing big brand campaigns. And there's been a lot of press about the first brand campaign that we did. And what we realized was with paid media in the mix, it became a little bit more important for brand and local to begin to be slightly more aligned. And so all of a sudden, that perspective that we had on um, brand and local you know, run side by side in support of the business but are pretty much autonomous, now because of this new layer of paid media and a national brand story to tell in a very new way, we had to start to think about how they come together and how they're slightly more aligned. So I think that's part of the evolution is as the business grows and changes, social has to continue to evaluate its role. And for us, that means looking at both brand and local together. So that that fascinates me because doesn't that put more burden on the local staff who's managing their social media presence to be in alignment with that brand strategy? I think it does. But what we've discovered is that if we inform them and if we give them the right tools, then they're absolutely willing to participate because it's exciting and they want to be part of it. So what we've tried to do is adjust how we deliver information and when we deliver information. So we're trying to get out two to three to four months in advance of where we previously had been with assets and guidance so that when they're ready to start thinking about their planning, we've already provided them with, here's how we're thinking holistically. Here's the assets we're going to provide to you. Here's what you're going to have to work with. Um, you know, we discovered two years ago that we put a hashtag on a poster and just about every store rallied around it and used it as a major component in their holiday decorating. And so now we try to bring them into the conversation and help them think about if we go down this path with the social campaign, how would it show up in your stores? So what we've tried to do is, is change our own processes to make it as easy as possible for them. And we found that it's almost always about information and inspiration. And all I really need to do is give them a running start and they'll take it from there. So, so we really try to, to provide as much clarity as we can and to set 
as much expectation as we can, but I'm, I'm really not trying to make them fall into line. I'm just trying to say, let's all think about it in this way. And now you go and apply your local savvy and your local passion to Mm -hmm. something that's slightly more defined than it previously was. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, and thinking to like channels, like that applies to channels too, right? There was a time when it, the idea was all channels, every kind of channel should be available to brand and local. And then Pinterest showed up and we really believed for the customer that brand Pinterest was what was best for our organization and best for our customer. And for the first time ever, we sent out a communication that said, please don't do local on Pinterest because we don't believe. Right. So. All right. That's interesting. And, and so that kind of segues, I don't know that this would uh, fall into the the next category that I want to cover with you, Natanya. And that is, you know, as I listen to you describe your story and, and I got a little bit of a glimpse when I saw you speak at uh, the social shakeup conference, uh, you have your act together. You are one of the brands that's been recognized on numerous occasions, numerous platforms as a brand that is really doing well with your social strategy. So let's put, let's find the cracks in the armor, Natanya. What are some <laughs> lessons learned? What are some even mistakes, if you're willing to share you know, along the way? Every journey has some lessons learned. Do you have any that you can share with my listeners? Oh, absolutely. I am um, a big fan of looking at the things that didn't go as planned and learning from them. I think that that if we don't, um, we're fooling ourselves and fooling our leadership. So there's a couple of lessons that that we learned that I think are critical, which is particularly for, I think this is true for social holistically, it's not really possible to be in every channel. And I think that and and do them all well, unless you have unlimited budget, which none of us really have. Mm -hmm. And so if we look at it at the brand level, there were a few times when we would try to jump into a channel because we believed that we should be there. And there was maybe a little bit of pressure from the business to say, why aren't we in XYZ channel? Mm -hmm. And of course, what you know, from a community standpoint is that when you when you open the doors to a community, then you're committed to the community. And I think that's true at the local level as well. The stores would feel a lot of pressure to be in every possible channel. And if you think about social as a a sliver of the function at the local level, there's absolutely no way they can effectively manage every single channel. And so one of the things that we had to do is take a hard look at the data and take a hard look at the way that the business was staffed and go to them and say, you know what, you may not be able to pull Twitter off as a store Mm -hmm. because you have to respond. Here's the expectation in Twitter and here's what our data is showing and here's what broad trending data is showing. And the stores that are doing it really well are actually not stores, but are almost always what we call Metro accounts. So, you know, Whole Foods, New York city, Whole Foods, Austin, Whole Foods, Chicago, where they've brought together a team of people to handle Twitter and to really go back to the business and say, why are we in social? And let's not just be in a channel for the sake of being in a channel, but we really want to do it well. And we actually uh, pulled back on some of those regional and uh, those local Twitter accounts and asked them to focus on the place that they could be the most effective given their resourcing. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that that that's a lesson that we all sort of know, but that I find we always have to keep relearning. That's actually one of the reasons that we're not on Snapchat right now is because we feel like to have a really strong Snapchat presence, we need to have a solid content plan. We need to have the right community management. And when we look at all of the other places in our business where we're finding value, social customer service is a place that's deriving specific value for the business. And so if I have to pick, I'm going to continue to to put effort there. And so it means that we may not be quite as trendy and we may not get as many ad age articles about what we're doing in Snapchat, but it's what is right for the customer and what's right for the business. Okay. How are you guiding the stores as it relates to Periscope? We are right now, one of the things that we do is we tend to, if we believe that there's a local opportunity, we tend to ask a small handful of stores to be our guinea pigs and to work with us on a pilot and some best practices. So we'll say, if you're really passionate about this and there's something that you think that could be done really well with Periscope, then we'd like to hear your ideas and we would like to um, collaborate with you on them. But the other thing we ask them is, how are you going to maintain this community? 
I think with Periscope, it's a little bit easier because there's not as much expectation that you're regularly posting on Periscope, at least not right now, right? You know, there's the, the jury's still out from a data perspective. Mm -hmm. So what we try to say is instead of everybody rushing out and getting a Periscope account, we're looking for a few hand raisers to work with us because we actually do believe that there's a lot of opportunity for Periscope in our stores because holistically, I believe that social media provides a virtual window into our stores and we do uh, value tours, various special diet tours, like a gluten-free tour or a low sugar tour. We do demos. Um, our seafood and our meat teams will tell you their favorite ways to, to prepare product. We do wine tastings. And we think all of those things are great fodder for Periscope. Mm -hmm. So what we're really trying to understand is what does it take for Periscope to be technically successful in the store? You know, do we have the, it's really mundane, but, but make or break things like Wi-Fi, right? Is our store Wi-Fi going to let us, um, mm -hmm. you know, are there are times of day that the store Wi-Fi is so overtaxed that we can't do Periscope then. Right. So um, that's you, kind of our approach. The other side to this co this Periscope coin though, is the store consumer, the customer, mm -hmm. he or she can just pull out their phone and be scoping their shopping mm -hmm. experience. They can, and they have. Yeah, I'm sure. Yep. And, you know, I, I think we're okay with that. When I first came to Whole Foods, there was a little bit of reluctance around photo taking, and we weren't the only ones. You know, at one point I got asked to leave a pottery barn as a consumer because I was trying to take a picture of something that I thought I wanted to buy. Like, I think, you know, all businesses have come, have come a long way, right? That was many years ago, and I know that's right. not their policy now. But that was ours, too. And, and, we really want people to share their experience. We have a lot of data that shows us that our customers really enjoy being social in the store. A lot of our stores have bars and other venues, um, but they also really enjoy sharing. We've done some geolocation work to understand the conversation that happens um, in social channels in our stores based on, on geography. And we think that's really great because who better to advocate for the Whole Foods Market experience than our customers. And, you know, they may have friends who don't come to Whole Foods very much, who see Whole Foods as um, a couple times a year, they only come to order their turkey during holiday. And so I can't think of any better marketing for our business than someone sharing their experience with their friends and family. We have a really aggressive listening program and social care program. So if somebody's periscoping a negative experience, I want to know about it. Mm -hmm. And I want to find out what's going on and I want to jump on it and I want to solve it. Because sure. if they weren't periscoping it, I wouldn't know right. and I wouldn't have an opportunity <laughs> to make it better. And, and, and the operative word there is the opportunity. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's terrific. Well, Natanya, before I segue to my one thing question, I want to kind of uh, recap uh, some key takeaways here from your brand story and how Whole Foods Market is really doing a terrific job, as I said in my introduction, of aligning the company's core values with your daily execution of social. What I heard you say is that, and you said this early on, that the standards evolve in your industry and you're always evolving with them and then integrating them into all elements of how you communicate and engage in social media. You also integrate social media CRM and customer care under the umbrella of your scope of responsibility. And I think that's really wise. A lot of other brands, I think, should consider doing that because they're all inextricably tied to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, you also, I love the hyper-local social concept uh, with over 400 stores uh, and over 850, is that right, social mm -hmm. media accounts? As of today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, probably 860. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but that hyper local social thing, and then the, the the way you organize it by having twelve regions, each one having a manager, almost like a hub and spoke model. And maybe mm -hmm. that's not a fair characterization, but that's kind of uh, a little bit the way that I see it. You also mentioned that you you've got to focus on tools and technology, and then empowering your team with that, and then also empowering them through information and inspiration. I love that. And then last but not least, you also acknowledge that you can't be in all channels and something like Periscope is something that, you know, you're, you're beginning to pilot and experimenting with, but also listening how the customer is using it so that you can um, respond to opportunities as customers, you know, use it to communicate. So those are kind of the key takeaways that I got. Did I, did I miss anything? No, I think that's a, an awesome sur summary. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. So now let's talk about that one thing, Natanya. If there's any one thing that you could change about the way that business is conducted today, what would that be? I would love to see every business start to think about 
customer service as marketing and to stop thinking about call avoidance, how quickly they can get customers off the phone and seeing customer care as a negative and a necessary evil and instead see it as the opportunity that it is to build advocates and create differentiation. Because I believe that if every business did that, it would transform the way that customers think about engaging with businesses before and after the purchase. We spend so much time thinking about how we're going to market to someone and get them through our doors, virtual or otherwise, and what's going to happen during. But we seem to feel like what happens afterwards is just a thing we have to deal with instead of that opportunity. And so if we could see a holistic change in the way that business thinks about customer care as one of the greatest marketing opportunities that we have, I think relationships between businesses and brands would improve exponentially. And we would actually see the way that marketing dollars are spent shifting to something that's much more valuable to the customer. Yeah. And I, I totally agree with you. And I want to give a shout out to my friend, Dan Gingis and, mm-hmm. um, and his partner in crime, Dan Moriarty, because I know that you were on their podcast mm-hmm. where your whole conversation focused on how Whole Foods Market is so focused on customer care. So this whole concept of customer care is marketing is absolutely brilliant. I couldn't agree with you more. And I don't care if you're uh, a retailer like Whole Foods Markets or you're a B2B enterprise software company, the same thing applies. Mm-hmm. I agree. Totally, totally awesome. All right, fantastic. Well, Natanya Anderson, Director of Social Media and Community at Whole Foods Market, thank you so much for joining me here today on the Social Business Engine podcast. My listeners know that uh, the things that we've discussed here today, including some of your social media channels, and it won't be all 100, 850 of them, <laughs> but <laughs> several of them we will have linked. Is there anything special you'd like to point people to online? You know, if they come to our, our Whole Foods Market page and they select a store and they look for their local store, they'll be able to see all the really cool things that their local stores are doing in social media. It's the fastest way. It's all about the local store. Absolutely. Yep. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Natanya. And I want to remind my listeners that this episode is sponsored by my friends at Cision, a leading global media intelligence company. And we are going to be publishing the next social business journal titled What's Working in Social Media Marketing. And you'll be notified if you are subscribed by email. And if you are not, you can text 38470, actually text SBE show (laughs) to 38470. Once again, that's SBE show and it's not case sensitive to 38470. And that will get you subscribed. And hey, if you're a regular listener to the Social Business Engine podcast, have you written a review yet in iTunes or Stitcher? I'd really appreciate it. And of course, it's a great way to help others discover this podcast. And I always enjoy hearing from my listeners. Some people tweet me at Bernie Borges. Some people tweet uh, Social Business Engine, which is at SB Engine. Some people just follow the hashtag SBE Show. And others just reply to my email that we send every Friday morning, and it does come from me, so you can absolutely reply to me. Remember to visit our show notes page at socialbusinessengine.com slash podcast. As I mentioned a moment ago, we'll have links to uh, cool local stuff there from Whole Foods Market. And that is going to do it for this episode. But first, hey, if you have a social business story that you want to share on this podcast, reach out to me through the contact page at socialbusinessengine.com or tweet me at Bernie Borges. So until next time, this is your host, Bernie Borges, also a Find and Convert, wishing you continued success on that journey of yours on your path to social business success. 